Australia's Secret Weapon The Global Demand for its Renewable Energy Minerals By 2030, the world will need 42 times more lithium than we produced in 2020. 42 times. And while everyone's fighting over oil and natural gas, one country has quietly become the gatekeeper of the entire renewable energy revolution. Australia. But what's happening right now in its remote desert towns will shock you, and it's already rewriting the rules of global power. Let me be clear, Australia doesn't just mine lithium. It controls 46% of the world's entire supply. That's more than Chile, China, and Argentina combined. And you've probably never even heard of the places where this is happening. Green bushes, Western Australia. Population, 400, three hours from the nearest city. In 2019, Sarah Chin bought a small cafe there for basically nothing. She thought she'd found peace and quiet. Instead, she went broke in six months. Nobody came. Nobody bought coffee. Then something changed. The lithium boom hit like a freight train. Suddenly, her cafe was packed with miners making $180,000 a year, eating $20 sandwiches for lunch, tipping 50 bucks like it was spare change. Sarah tripled her income in 18 months. She just bought her second property. According to a 2023 International Energy Agency report, global lithium demand exploded by 487% between 2018 and 2023. Not doubled, not tripled, nearly five times. If you drive through green bushes today, you'll see $90,000 trucks lining dirt roads, dust clouds the size of football fields rising at dawn, and tiny weatherboard houses selling for triple their 2020 value. It looks like the gold rush, because it is. But here's what the mining companies don't want you to know. Every electric vehicle needs 8 kilograms of lithium. Every Tesla Powerwall battery needs 50 kilograms. Without lithium, the green revolution stops. Full stop. No EVs, no grid-scale storage, no renewable energy future. And China knows this. Right now, China processes 70% of the world's lithium, but they don't produce enough raw material. They need Australia, desperately. In 2022 alone, Chinese companies poured $3.7 billion into Australian lithium mines. They're not just buying the product. They're buying direct access to the source. If you've ever wondered why your government keeps talking about critical minerals and supply chain security, this is exactly why your phone, your laptop, your electric future, all runs on rocks pulled from Australian deserts by workers you'll never meet. A 2024 Goldman Sachs study projected that lithium prices could hit $40,000 per ton by 2027. That's a 300% increase from 2020 levels. This isn't a trend. It's an economic earthquake. But there's a darker side to this boom that nobody's talking about. Here's the irony that'll make your head spin. Australia mines lithium to save the planet from fossil fuels. But the process uses 500,000 liters of water for every single ton of lithium extracted. Let that sink in. Meet James Thornton. He's 52. Fourth generation cattle farmer in South Australia. His family's worked the same land since 1933. In 2020, a lithium mine started operating 15 kilometers from his property. Within three years, his water table dropped six meters. His grandfather's 90-year-old well, the one that survived droughts, heat waves, and floods, ran completely dry in 2023. James had to sell half his herd. Cattle he'd raised from birth. Gone. One lithium mine uses the same amount of water as 2,000 Australian households. Every single day. Research from the University of Queensland published in 2023 found that lithium mining in arid regions depletes underground aquifers 40% faster than previous studies estimated. These aren't renewable resources. Once they're gone, they're gone for generations. But, and this is important, a new direct lithium extraction technology being tested in Victoria could slash water use by 90%. Companies are racing to scale it up. If they succeed, the game changes completely. Yet, that's not even the biggest threat to Australia's dominance. Chile and Argentina are sitting on what experts call the lithium triangle, a region holding 70% of the planet's known lithium reserves. 
and they're coming for Australia's market share with aggressive mining expansion and lower production costs. Then there's Bolivia. In late 2023, they announced newly confirmed deposits that could hold 23 million tons of lithium. That's potentially double Australia's current reserves, sitting under one of the poorest countries in South America. Marcus Way knows this pressure firsthand. He's the CEO of an Australian lithium startup that went public in 2022. When Argentina announced a new megamine partnership with a Chinese consortium in January 2024, his stock dropped 34% in one week. Investors panicked. But here's the twist nobody saw coming. Australia's lithium is higher quality. It's hard rock spodumene. Easier to process, lower refining costs, more consistent purity than the brine deposits in South America. That technical advantage gives Australia a 5-10 to 10 year head start even with smaller total reserves. A Morgan Stanley report from 2024 calculated that Australia will still supply 38% of global lithium by 2030, despite the new competition flooding the market. And the geopolitical game just got even more interesting. The United States, Japan, and the European Union are now offering Australia billion-dollar partnership deals to secure lithium supply chains outside of Chinese control. Suddenly, it's not just China buying. It's everyone. But the real question isn't who has the most lithium in the ground. It's who controls what happens next. By 2035, financial analysts are predicting Australia's lithium exports will hit $50 billion annually. That's more than the country currently makes from iron or its largest export for the past 30 years. Towns that barely existed are exploding overnight. Cambalda, Western Australia, had 3,000 residents in 2018. Today, 8,000 and climbing. Mining companies aren't just hiring workers. They're building entire suburbs in the desert, new schools, medical clinics, shopping centers, entire towns materializing from red dirt. But there's a catch. These boom towns only survive if lithium prices stay high. If prices crash, like they did briefly in 2023, these places could become ghost towns within a decade. Abandoned infrastructure, empty houses, another chapter in Australia's long history of mining booms and busts. If you're an investor, an environmentalist, or someone who just bought an electric car, you need to understand something. You're now directly tied to what happens in Australia's outback. The decisions made in boardrooms in Perth and Beijing will determine whether your car battery costs $3,000 or $10,000 in five years. But here's the hope. New recycling technologies could recover 95% of lithium from old batteries by 2030. That would massively reduce demand for virgin mining. South Korea just opened the world's first large-scale lithium recycling plant that can process 24,000 tons of batteries annually. The circular economy isn't just a buzzword anymore. It's becoming reality. The question is whether it'll happen fast enough. So here's what I actually want to know from you. Should Australia prioritize environmental protection and slow down its lithium mining, giving other countries time to catch up, but protecting ecosystems and water supplies? Or should they race to extract as much lithium as possible right now, before Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina flood the market and crash prices? Is this a green revolution or just a new gold rush with better PR? Drop your honest take in the comments. And if you think we should investigate which country will actually win this lithium race in the next decade, or whether recycling will make mining obsolete, let us know what you want us to cover next. Because the story, it's just getting started.